value study time. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to draw out a three value study based off of my source, which is this lemon right here. So the first thing you wanna do is have your materials. Got my piece of paper, sketchbook paper, got my pencil, um, erasers and things. And I am going to be shading this in with my Copic markers. This value simplification is gonna be just three values. It's gonna be white, mid-tone, and the dark shadows. And so it's gonna be the white of the page. Mid-tone will be my uh, Copic Cool, or yeah, it's my Copic Chow Cool Gray number five. And then I've got black 100. So I'm using the Copic Chow markers. Um, so then the next thing we need is the source. So I'm choosing to do this demonstration with a lemon. Um, it prints out pretty big. So as I draw it, I'm gonna be proportionately scaling it down. And it's gonna be roughly, you know, the same lemon. I'm not gonna be super precise on making it, you know, exactly measured out to be a scaled down proportion, but it's gonna, you're gonna be able to tell that my drawing is still solid and strong and it comes from this source. So there's a couple of things that we need to think through before we actually start drawing and that's just looking at the source. So with this lemon, we know that we need to simplify it down. We know that we need to simplify it down into just three values, darks, midtones, and lights. And that specifically is coming from value and form, which are two different design elements and you use those for contrast, you use those to give perceived space, you know, a three-dimensional form in space, even though we're drawing on a 2D surface, a piece of paper. So I'm looking at this, and you don't have to have a super good understanding of form necessarily to just be able to notice some things and pick things out from the picture. So we have this lemon, and it's generally a sphere. Just notice how could you simplify this down? This happens to be, you know, a fairly simple source, um, which is partially why I'm doing it as a demo, just for sake of time. But we have generally a sphere. We do have some shadows. You can see the super dark areas and where those are. Now the value of this leaf and stem in general is very dark, but we still have a light side shadow side of even the leaf and the stem. Notice we can separate this lemon into just two categories of light side, shadow side. Within the light side, we can divide the two values up into midtone and then highlight for the lightest light area. Notice in the shadow side, we have this darkest shadow within the lemon itself, within the visual of the lemon, and that is the core shadow. And we have this beautiful rim of mid-tone value that's separating the core shadow from the surface or from the cast shadow that is being cast from the lemon on the surface, and that is the reflected light. So we're gonna take a mental note of that. With these mental notes, I need to be thinking through the simplification. I can only use three values. Therefore, what should I omit? Simplification is a game of what can I not show and my drawing still hold strong. There's a couple of things in this lemon that I'm definitely gonna admit. One of them is, look at all those pores. Now, individually, those pores have form to them. There's like a little like light side, shadow side to each of these. I am not in the world going to be including that in my simplification. I don't need to. I can still get my drawing, even with a value simplification, to look like a lemon without including all of those little pores. So I'm gonna omit that. It's not necessary for the integrity of my drawing. The other thing I'm gonna omit is this source includes the surface table having a pattern. Now we can see that there is a cast shadow that is cast on top of the surface, so the table. And if we squint, we can see these shapes clearer. And that brings me to always, always squint. Squinting gets your brain to see things without the distraction of all the details. And sometimes it's helpful to half squint. You know, you don't wanna get rid of all the details if they can be helpful. But squinting allows you to notice shapes, big shapes. Like when I squint really hard, I get this dramatic, curve right there that very definely uh, gives me the the separation shape of light side shadow side the shadow side's almost like this crescent moon of darkness <laughs> and then when i squint i get more of that semicircle of what the cast shadow is regardless of the pattern of the table and i don't need that pattern of the table so i'm not going to worry about it so squinting helps you eliminate what you don't need and only capture what you do need and that is the beauty of simplification 
So I know that those two patterns or textures I'm going to omit. So let's start drawing this out here. What I first like to do when I'm going to draw this out, my pens are rolling away. There we go. All right. So what I first like to do is I like to get a feel for the general shape and the general angle of this guy. And I generally sketch out a silhouette shape of the, of the whole thing. So I have my sphere, just kind of like an egg shape. Notice the little bumps on either end, you know, every lemon has those. And so we have a general angle of the axis here. So if I were to start with that, I want to make sure this is in the, the frame. Okay, so that's, you know, not like the most perfect thing ever. It's a very light circle. It's a little bit longer than it is wide. And I'm not measuring, I'm not doing anything very specific to get this proportionate. I'm just noticing amounts of space. And when I drew down my little circle here, I noticed that even visually there was a proportion difference. Mine was just a little too long. So although it's not a big deal, however, I did notice it. I'm just gonna make it a little more accurate to the source just for sake of consistency, but that's pretty good. All right, so again, not perfect, but we can refine this later. I'm just sketching this out in pencil. I've got my two little nodules. I've got a general axis here, something like that. And I'm just capturing angles right now. I can always smooth those out later. Now it's kind of an optical illusion because of how the light is falling on this lemon. It doesn't look like the lemon is at an angle because the light's coming at it, you know, pretty straightforward. And we've just got this delineated line of light side, shadow side kind of straight down from here and then it hooks underneath. But we do have those nodules there and there and that's what I was capturing there. All right, so notice some alignments and amounts of space. I'm now gonna capture uh, my stem and leaf. So to the right of this little nodule is the stem. He's kind of shooting up straight up from the top there. I'm capturing angles. I'm noticing sizes. I'm using my peripheral vision a lot, by the way. I'm looking at this and I'm letting the peripheral vision look at this to kind of help me constantly check if my shapes, angles, and sizes are at least comparable, that it would make sense to keep going in this direction angle change. It's a little thick and hairy. I'm using my kneaded eraser to help me erase these things. So I'm drawing lightly. I'm going to better define my shapes once I know exactly what it is I want. Like I'm going to start better defining this shape. And in the end, these guidelines with my pencil are just guidelines with my pencil. I'm going to be filling these in with shapes of value. Pencil line work is not the end goal. It is the means to the end. Now, in my source, notice that the leaf overlaps this corner a little bit. So I'm gonna get that general angle down. Noticing that negative space of that triangle. I'm not worried about making it perfectly the same because as a designer, you don't necessarily need to copy it is if you are a human Xerox machine, you need to be able to notice, see relationships, understand the relationship, use it to your advantage, and if you can make a solid structured drawing, even deviating from the source, then that's fine. All right, so then this extends out that angle right there. And I'm gonna make that overlap just a little bit more just to make it uh, like definite that we are overlapping this. Now I'm noticing before I get to the end, like the tip of my leaf, I'm noticing the alignment just visually straight across. It looks like that leaf straight across ends above like this midline of the lemon. Like this lemon, if I had a midline that horizontally bisected my lemon, the tip of the leaf even lands above that. So that would mean that my leaf tip probably needs to land somewhere comparable. That matters just to me right now it matters because I don't want the leaf to look like it's taking over the show. 
This is about the lemon and the leaf helps support that message. The leaf supports the lemon, which is what my story is about. So that's pretty good. I'm just going to leave it like that. Again, it's not perfect. But notice though, even with it not being perfect, can you tell that this obviously came from this source? I didn't even measure. Like I didn't do any sort of, you know, compare with to height. I just visually assessed masses. I visually assessed shapes and space. All of those key design element terms. All right, so now I'm going to better define. Notice, by the way, there's like a little crater happening here. Now I'm not looking at this lemon in 3D, so I'm not totally sure what's going on with the form, but there's obviously a divot somewhere that's causing this change in the silhouette shape. So I'm going to choose, as the designer, I'm gonna to choose to just omit it. I'm not blindly copying this. I'm noticing things in the source and I'm choosing. Do I wanna keep it? Is it necessary for the integrity of my structure in the drawing? Or can I omit it and be fine? Something like that, I can omit that and no one's gonna know. Remember, when you're creating designs, no one is necessarily seeing where you got the design from. They're not looking at your source. You need to be able to stand on your own with your own artwork. You should not rely on the source to hint to your viewer, oh, that's what that's supposed to be. Now there's something fun here. There's a little cast shadow that wraps around this little area of the lemon from the leaf. I like how that shape wraps around. So I'm just gonna do that there. Okay. All right. Now at this point, we're looking pretty good. This is now the silhouette and this is my drawn lemon. I only grabbed the angles here of the leaf. Notice that it is scalloped. And I like how those shapes, you know, just they're interesting. So I'm going to put those in. I'm going to lightly erase my guidelines. I needed those down there. That actually gives me the structure. I need those accurate angles. But now that I have them and I can use them as guidelines, I now can come back in and give me or give myself that nice silhouette complexity. I'm not gonna worry about this guy right here. I'm just gonna do this. Now here's something else to think through. Whatever details are in the darkest dark area, you're probably not gonna see. So I'm not really worried about getting that scalloped edge here that's in the darkest dark of the value of this leaf. Now I could, I could have put it in, like that's fine. I just chose to not. And I'm just gonna focus on the scalloped ends right there. Okay, again, not perfect, but there we go. All right. So now I need to start value mapping. I need to start looking at shapes of value and capturing them down here. I guess the other thing I can erase is my little axis line. Whoop, here we go. All right. So I need to be thinking through everything that I was thinking through at the beginning, you know, with the values and squinting and looking at those shapes. Always have in the back of your mind, how many values do I have to cap at? Well, I've got to cap at three. I'm only using the white of the page, a mid-tone, and a black. So um, I'm looking at this. I'm noticing, okay, so there's a nice core shadow. He hooks underneath there. That's pretty cool. Darkest dark right there. I'm thinking through first maybe what could I put as my black? You know, I know that I'm going to be using my black marker. What is my darkest dark? That's really easy to pick out. Obviously, my darkest dark is going to be probably here on my leaf. The whole leaf is dark, but it looks like I could use a mid-tone for this part of the leaf because there's still a light side, shadow side. Value is relative, so that means that we can still call something a light value if we're comparing it to something that is darker than it. Even though you could compare this value to, let's say, this highlight, and this is a dark value compared to that, compared to this dark side of the leaf, this is a light value. So that's what we mean by value is relative, and you need to use that to your advantage. I am noticing that I could use my mid-tone marker for this side because I can use my black for this side and still have that nice contrast. I'll be using, um, with the shapes in here, I'll use my mid-tone as well, but I've got some nice shapes in here that I could use my black. This lemon is pretty straightforward. It looks like I really could just use black here for the core shadow. It has that really nice hook underneath there to show the form of the spherical nature of this lemon. 
the bulk of this lemon will be mid-tone and then I've got some nice shapes that I could be putting in here um, just designating that as the white of the page remember I'm not putting white in there I'm gonna just be using the white of the page for that now I do want to make sure that my core shadow shape as I hook that under there and I'll draw that in a second I don't want that to be all the way to the edge we've got that beautiful uh, reflected light of mid-tone that I want in there and something that I forgot to draw, but I will, is the cast shadow. I definitely want to give this a cast shadow. It grounds my subject. So I'm noticing about where that is. Remember, squint. And I have like a general large value everywhere here, but this, this is the main cast shadow right there. So I'm just going to grab that. <laughs> By grab, I mean draw it down. All right. So that's my cash shadow. Helps to ground my lemon. All right, let's start actually fleshing out what we're noticing here. Draw lightly. Sometimes you notice shapes, you're putting them down, and you're like, oh wait, I see what like where else that could go, what else that could do, how I can wrap that around better. I'm noticing that this tapers, I want this to taper. You can have multiple designers do a limited value study of the same source and all of them come up with different solutions. And that's what's beautiful about being a designer is you're making choices and your choices are your own. It doesn't mean that they're right or wrong. There is an element of objectiveness when it comes to why are you getting your choices? You know, be looking at the source. You know, if I put a core shadow somewhere over here where it's obviously the light side, you could argue that's wrong if what you're going for is some form of representation of the real thing. But given that you are following along with the value patterns of the form that you see in the source, there is no right or wrong answer. There is, however, a difference maybe in pleasing shapes or shapes that communicate better than maybe other shapes. All right, so that is my my core shadow. Okay, so I've got my little tapered shape right there. You can see where I'm getting that from. I'm allowing this little ridge right there of the reflected light to hold true right there. And remember, the bulk of this will be mid-tone. There's a couple of places that I'm going to add a little bit more black. Now, this area right here looks like it could be mid-tone. It's darker than like the general mid-tone, but it's also not as dark as here. So this being the cash shadow being super, uh, not the cash shadow, the core shadow being super dark, this being just a general mid-tone, this is like a dark mid-tone. So how do, I, how do I handle that? I'm only using three values. This is almost like a fourth value. Well, you need to make a choice. Do you either leave that to merge with the mid-tone like just the normal, you know, mid-tone, or do you maybe add some shapes to get it to be a part of the core shadow? Well, squint to help you. It looks like it could be part of the core shadow, even though the actual darkest dark of the core shadow is here. I'm going to just make it part of the core shadow. Okay, I like what I'm doing with this, but I'm going to change this around. I don't like this shape. I'm gonna add a little bit more space. I haven't talked about shape language. Shape language is <laughs> the language of your shapes. Some designers use it to describe style what style you're doing this in. So the style I'm using is very like bubbly kind of flowy shapes. I'm not using any um, like jagged, aggressively angular shapes. Everything just kind of flows. There's kind of a natural organic flow of bubbliness to something that's spherical, especially like a piece of fruit. All right, so that's the kind of style I'm using. I could do this in um, an angular style. I might do that for another video. That would be kind of fun. All right, so I've got my core shadow. This I also want is black. 
I'm squinting. I'm noticing that even though this is a merely a dark mid-tone, it's not as black as this, I could clump this with this. And I'm just choosing to have this be this shape. I'm letting it kind of fit like a puzzle piece around this shape I already made. And then what I want to do is I want to maybe help to find in my viewer what's going on with this little bump up there. So I'm gonna like wrap that around. That's kind of the base of it. So that's my reasoning for that there. Always have a reason for why you're doing what you're doing with your shapes, with your values. All right, so that's what I've got there. A large chunk of this is gonna be mid-tone. So it looks like my next thing, oh, I do have a dark thing down there. Let me put that guy in. There we go. All right, so that'll be black. Feel free to lightly shade stuff in so you, it can help you can kind of visualize it better if you need to. Let me finish the lemon and then I'll go on to the leaf. So I've done the blacks of the lemon. I know the majority is gonna be mid-tone. I'm noticing that there, I'm squinting. And now I've got this highlight area right there. I mean, I could just do a circle for the highlight. I could simplify it just that simply, <laughs> but I'm gonna actually give myself a couple of fun shapes. Notice the shape language I'm using on the other side, you know, maybe something that works in that, um, in that style. So, Maybe something like that. Do you see how in this highlight area, I kind of have this larger chunk and then we maybe have a smaller chunk and that's where I'm getting this from. And I'm getting this shape language because I, I was using a kind of a similar shape language on the other side, that same shape style. Now I need to be careful here. I don't want my lines to be ambiguous because this is where my mid-tone marker is going to butt up to this but this needs to be the white of the paper so I want to make sure that I'm not seeing like ghosting or anything um, going on in there where it needs to remain the white of the paper all right so continuing on here I want to speed this up because I'm going to actually you know shade this in um, okay so I've got my stem and my leaf I've got darks and mid-tones as you know my two-tone light side shadow side of the stem and the leaf Notice I've got these nodules here. Do I need to include them to have the integrity of this stem to hold true? No, I, I really don't. <laughs> so I'm going to, within my drawing here, I'm gonna just omit them. And I'm separating. So this now is mid-tone, this is gonna be the darks. I'm gonna just have this whole stem be dark. And this is why, even though I could see that this technically is lighter than this, Remember what this is butting itself up to. This is the danger of simplification. Sometimes things will bleed into other things and it could be cool or it could be detrimental. So if I separated this area right here of black and then mid-tone, what's right next to that? This is also mid-tone. So that's gonna bleed right in there and it's gonna end up looking probably like this stem has a strange shape and there's a strange protuberance from this lemon. So I'm gonna just simplify this stem to just be black. I've got that light side. Everything here is gonna be black. And I'm just gonna simplify all that will be black. And now I'm gonna bring myself down to the leaf where I have nice shape you see that right there black mid-tone all right I'm also gonna have this be black right there but that's still gonna be fine because that helps to wrap around the lemon all right so this is my shape designed simplified lemon with its structure with the pencil marks I'm going to shade this in with my markers in another video Part two.